Time under tension is believed to be a key factor that determines the amount of muscle growth that happens after a workout. However, time under tension actually refers to two different concepts. On the one hand, it refers to training volume, so the number of sets or reps. More time under tension refers to more sets or more reps. On the other hand, time under tension can refer to the repetition speed. So a longer time under tension means a slower repetition speed. And that slower repetition speed can be caused either because the weight is heavier or we are more fatigued and therefore we're forced to move more slowly or it can be caused by us deliberately moving more slowly which is to use a slower tempo. When we use time under tension as a measurement of training volume then we can use exactly the same thought process as we did to produce the idea of stimulating reps. Time under tension in this context only refers to the time spent when the high threshold motor units are recruited and their muscle fibres are producing a sufficient level of force. And that force is the mechanical loading that triggers the individual muscle fibres to grow. And the level of force is determined by the force velocity relationship. So those muscle fibres have to be shortening slowly. When we understand that the only time under tension that counts is the time spent when the high threshold motor units are recruited and they're producing a high level of force, this explains a lot of the observations that we make naturally about strength training and muscular contractions in general. So we know instinctively that endurance activities don't cause muscle growth uh, as a general rule. And yet these activities involve thousands of repetitions of muscular contractions. They involve what we might assume to be a very high level of time under tension. However, most of them don't normally involve very high levels of motor unit recruitment. So the high threshold motor units are not recruited, their muscle fibers are therefore not stimulated, and because the high threshold motor units control most of the, mo of the muscle fibers in the muscle and also the most responsive ones, um, there is no real hypertrophy after that type of training. Similarly, we need a certain level of mechanical loading on the muscle fibers to occur for hypertrophy to happen. So we can perform high volume vertical jumping programs in which the high threshold motor units are recruited but their individual muscle fibers are producing a very low force because of the force velocity relationship. And so we actually need a situation where high threshold motor units are recruited and their muscle fibers are producing a sufficiently high level of force for hypertrophy to occur. So these types of training don't achieve that. What we need is either strength training with a heavy load or strength training with a lighter load to high levels of fatigue because both of these cause high levels of motor unit recruitment and a slow muscle shortening velocity which allows the muscle fibers of the high threshold motor units to produce a high level of force. And it's only that time that counts towards our measurements of time under tension that are related to muscle growth. In practice, this means that only some of the reps in a set count towards the time under tension that causes hypertrophy in exactly the same way that only some of the reps of a set are stimulating. So it's entirely possible to perform high volume training programs that are intended to create a lot of time under tension, but don't actually create very much time under tension at all as far as the high threshold motor units are concerned. And I'm thinking specifically about uh, programs with moderate loads performed quite a long way away from failure. In such cases, most of the sets that we do don't involve any relevant time under tension despite the fact that their very purpose is to produce a high level of time under tension. The other way in which time under tension is used is to refer to the duration of time that we spend performing each individual repetition. And the duration of time that each rep takes is determined by three different factors. It's determined by the weight on the bar, so heavier weights require us to move more slowly. It's determined by our state of fatigue, so when we're more fatigued we move more slowly. And it's determined by our tempo, 
uh, decision to move, whether we move as fast as possible or whether we move more slowly. So each of these factors will determine the duration of the repetition uh, within each set of a, a strength training workout. While each of these factors can increase repetition duration, they don't increase the relevant time under tension for the high threshold motor units in the same way. So if we increase the weight on the bar, that causes us to slow down, but it also increases the level of motor unit recruitment that occurs. So motor unit recruitment is generally higher when lifting heavier weights because we need more muscle fibers to be active in order to lift the weight. Similarly, greater states of fatigue also lead to increased levels of motor unit recruitment because as the muscle fibers of the low threshold motor units become fatigued, we need those muscle fibers of the high threshold motor units to compensate for the loss in force. However, if we deliberately choose to move more slowly, then all that happens is that the muscle fibers of the low threshold motor units are now capable of producing a higher force because of the force velocity relationship. And what that means is, is that the recruitment levels drop. So when we choose to use a sub-maximal tempo, so if we choose to move slower than we are capable of moving in a given repetition, then motor unit recruitment will not be maximal. It cannot be maximal. So slower tempos lead to reduced motor unit recruitment, and therefore those repetitions performed with slow tempos don't actually count towards our time under tension. So if you're thinking about increasing time under tension by using a slower repetition duration, by deliberately using a slow tempo, then that isn't going to work because all that's happening is you're decreasing motor unit recruitment. However, during normal strength training for hypertrophy, the tempo that we use doesn't actually affect the results that we achieve. And this is because of the role of fatigue. So fatigue has two main effects during normal strength training. It increases the level of motor unit recruitment and it decreases the muscle contraction velocity. So as we progress through a set, the level of motor unit recruitment increases. So more high threshold motor units are recruited and the contraction velocity decreases, which means that the muscle fibers of those motor units are able to produce a higher force because of the force velocity relationship. So if we perform a set with a moderate load and we train close to failure or to failure, then we could perform that set with either a maximal bar speed on every repetition or we could perform it with a very slow tempo on every repetition. Now if we were to perform that set with a maximal bar speed on every repetition, then what would happen would be that motor unit recruitment would be fairly high throughout the whole set, would only increase a small amount as we progress through the set. However, contraction speed or bar speed would reduce quite a lot over the course of the set and we'd gradually become slower and slower and slower over the course of that set. Now, what that means is that the high threshold motor units are recruited for most of the set when we use a high bar speed, uh, a maximum bar speed, and that's because effort is the primary determinant of the level of motor unit recruitment. However, at the beginning of the set, the high threshold motor units, their muscle fibers are not experiencing a very high mechanical loading because they're not producing a very high force. They're all producing quite a small force. But as we go through the set and contraction velocity decreases, those high threshold motor units, their muscle fibers can exert a much higher force and experience a high level of mechanical loading due to the state of fatigue and that triggers hypertrophy but only towards the end of the set when both of those conditions, the high level of recruitment and the slow muscle fibre shortening velocity are present. Conversely, if we were to perform exactly the same set but with a very slow tempo then what would happen would be the opposite. So at the beginning we would have a very low level of motor unit recruitment, but we would have a high level of mechanical loading and force production by the muscle fibers that were active. So the muscle fibers of the low threshold motor units, which are few in number and don't tend to grow very much after strength training, 
would all produce high forces, but that doesn't matter because they won't contribute to hypertrophy afterwards. And then gradually, as we go through the set, then fatigue would cause those muscle fibers to produce less force and therefore motor unit recruitment would increase to compensate. So gradually, as we reach the end of the set, motor unit recruitment reaches the point where the high threshold motor units are active and their muscle fibers now produce high forces because we're moving slowly and this creates the mechanical loading that they need in order to produce hypertrophy. So as we can see, both sets, whether we're using a slow tempo or a maximal speed, both sets lead to the same result by the end of the set anyway.